Hi, so disabilities in the classroom. So learning disabilities um, may affect students' ability to listen, think, speak, read, write, spell, or do math calculations, low achievement in one or more of these areas. Um, reading disability, memory difficulties, emotional and social problems. So reading disabilities may include things like um, word identification, reading fluency, reading comprehension. Memory difficulties would include short-term, long-term, and working memory. Emotional and social problems, that would include things like students having anxiety, depression, or um, maybe acting out. Learning disabilities, so I said using technology, graphic organizers, um, chapter content binders to help them keep their um, ideas in order, ask questions to ensure that they're following along, and give student and buddy to help them stay on task. Communication disorders, so speech um, disorders include articulation disorders, apraxia, voice disorders, fluency disorders. Um, so articulation disorders would be like substitutions, om omissions, additions, and um, distortions. Apraxia would include, oh, this is usually caused by trauma. Voice disorders include things such as pitch, duration, intensity, and fluency disorders would be things like using the word um. Language impairments, so phonological, morphology, and syntax, and semantics. Um, so phonological would be things like not being sure what the middle sound is um, because they sound a lot like. So for example, pin and pen, they, they're not sure which middle sound to use for those. Um, so for these, I said graphic organizers, lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations, give students questions ahead of time, and small group discussions. So that one-on-one -on -one conversation can really help students, you know, if you see them in the hallway and stop them and have a conversation with them, it can really help them practice their conversation skills. Um, emotional and behavioral disorders, this is the inability to learn that is not caused by intellectual, sensory, or health issues. So that's the big key. It is not caused by these things. Um, they have trouble building relationships. Um, things that might be seen are anxiety and disorders, Mood disorders, oppositional defiant disorder, conduct disorder. So anxiety disorder is that number one thing that's seen in emotional and behavioral disorders. Um, so I said classroom team reward games teach conflict resolution skills and allow for leadership roles. So classroom team reward games, that would be like teaming them up by table and um, saying, okay, whoever has, um, like if they do a good thing or follow directions immediately, they get a point and at the end of the day whoever has the most points um, gets a prize. This can really help students to feel like they're a part of a team and to really work hard on doing what they're supposed to do and following the rules. So attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This affects the student's development and functioning in various situations. So to be considered ADHD side effects must be persistent, frequent, severe. Again, these are the three main things. They must be persistent, frequent, and severe. The three types are predominantly inactive, predominantly hyperactive, impulsive, and combined. So the predominantly inactive um, students move at a very slow pace. So um, you can see them not paying attention, um, not listening, not um, doing, not following daily activities, and not following and finishing tasks. Predominantly hyperactive and impulsive, they're not sitting still, um, they're not seated, they're talking, they may be running around the classroom, they're on the go, 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 and they have trouble with blurting. And the combined is, of course, self-explanatory. It's things from both of these combined. So I said set goals, allow for breaks, and alternative seating. I think alternative seating is amazing. Um, it allows for these wiggly students to stay in their seat but still be able to move around intellectual disability. So this is limitations on intellectual functioning and in adaptive behavior. So limitations on intellectual functioning. Um, students have trouble solving problems. They have trouble paying attention to important information. They have trouble with abstract thinking and learning from day-to-day -day experiences. So it's hard for them to take something from yesterday and today and use it tomorrow. So limitations in adaptive behavior, they have trouble with conceptual skills, which could be things such as money, social skills, and practical skills. So I said allow for verbal answers on assignments, set goals, 
praise good behavior and set reasonable expectations. So you don't want to set the bar so low that they're not being pushed to be better and to work hard, but you also don't want to set it so high that they're never going to meet those goals and they feel like they can't like they can't do it. So autism affects communication skills and social interactions. Um, students with autism have trouble communicating back and forth, so it's basically a one-sided conversation. Um, they have trouble with body language and eye contact, so that means they can't um, maintain eye contact. Trouble in maintaining relationships, fixation on objects and routines, and repetitive behaviors. So I said Houston's strengths to help them learn. So for example, memory, if they have an amazing memory, use that to help them learn new um, ideas. Concepts. Provide learning space if needed. So if your student needs um, their safe space in a corner or under a desk or under a table, allow them to do that. Um, of course, this may not be uh, acceptable for all, our student, all students, but it may be acceptable for the student and that's okay. Traumatic brain injury. Characteristics depend on the site and extent of the, of the injury. Physical changes include coordination difficulties, physical weakness, and fatigue. It affects the memory and executive functioning skills, trouble creating relationships, trouble solving problems, and trouble distinguishing emotions. Um, allow for breaks, chunk information so they don't feel overwhelmed with so much. Ask questions to ensure that they're following along. A planner to help with those executive functioning skills and a binder to help them stay organized. Hearing loss, difficulties in reading, writing, and speaking. Language delays because they don't hear so they're not sure how it's supposed to sound, how it's supposed to come out. Speech problems, problems with expressive speech so they may be hard to understand. So I said assign a buddy, buddies, small group, practice taking turns. So you can assign a buddy who um, is very familiar with the student and can um, understand the student better than the rest and that can help them feel like they're a part of something and they can actually communicate with somebody. Visual impairments. They have a limited ability to learn from others around them. Um, so just like simple tasks that we've learned just from watching, no one's told us step by step how to do things. Um, this can be hard for students with visual impairments. So um, students with visual impairments, they have to know the step by step by step. They can't just um, watch and learn. Share different social experiences and have limited spontaneity. So they're not very spontaneous. Um, access to technology and audiobook and lessons would be great for these students. So they don't feel like they're left out or not getting all the information. Giftedness. So students um, who are gifted have high general intellect, specific academic aptitude, high creativity, high leadership skills, and visual performing art artistry. So they may be just generally, um, their IQ might just be generally way above everybody else's, or they may be very good at chemistry or very good at um, music. Um, another thing um, about giftedness is, you know, things like they may know, they may be very fluent in another language, um, things of that sort. So for um, Universal Design for Learning for Giftedness, I said cluster grouping and discuss accel acceleration programs. So cluster grouping um, students who, if there's more than one gifted student in a class, you can group them together so they can work together on a maybe a higher project, a more accelerated project, and they can, you know, brainstorm and um, bounce ideas off each other. And they're kind of at the same level, so that would be great for them. Discuss acceleration programs. So this can be just taking an honors course, maybe taking a class um, at a higher level, or maybe just overall skipping a grade. And that is it. Thank you so much.